Hello and welcome everybody to the Empowered Living Saturday Show. My name is Holly Lane Smith, also known as Happy Holly. Quick disclaimer, you know, my nickname's Happy Holly. Paul was the one who originally gave me that nickname. But in case you're wondering if I've like found some magic potion or a pill that makes me happy all the time, it's not the case. I'm not happy all the time. But I do choose to be happy the majority of the time and you know, it serves me well. <laughs> so just wanted to say that. But anyways, here we are this morning going through the series on the seven universal laws of creation. And Paul asked me to share this morning on the law of gender. One of the seven universal laws that controls how we create in our lives. So I'm going to be sharing with you how to apply this in your life. And I'm, I'm going to give you some examples from my own life, a bit of my story of how I've gone to where I am right now and how, how the law of gender, how I, how I activated it and applied it in my life to make significant progress forward. First of all, we're going to go to a clip from the fully resourced mentorship program that Paul teaches. And this is where Paul's going to teach you what the law of gender is and how it works. And then I will see you on the other side. We'll go through the application of the law of gender. So see you on the other side. It's so easy for people to see other people's success and achievement as luck, especially when they weren't there during all of those rhythmic lows. They weren't there during the dry seasons. They weren't out in the fields, plowing the fields and digging the weeds. They only see the result and call it luck. They only see the results and call it chance. They don't understand the sacrifice that it takes to get your dream. They, they don't understand the, the minutes, the hours, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years. They don't understand the law of gender. And the law of gender again tells us that there's an incubation period and gestation period for all seeds. And your dream is a seed. Now, if anyone was asked if they wanted an opportunity to have and build and then sell a multi-million dollar company, most people would say yes. But you know what? Most people wouldn't stick with it for 10 or 15 years. Most people quit. Most people lack the awareness of the law of gender. We know that when we plant corn, it takes 120 days for corn to grow. We know when a woman becomes pregnant, it takes nine months for the baby to grow. I really enjoy a good red wine. And one of the things that makes red wine great is time. If you harvest the grapes and crush them and drink them too soon, it's no good. There's a gestation period, a fermentation period of time. It's time that makes diamonds, time and pressure. Not just time, time and pressure. So it's all the pressure that I had to go through all those years the pressure of being able to get it right, the, the pressure of studying and learning. It's really a pressure of discipline, isn't it? Discipline is our ability to give ourselves a command and then follow through with it. It's just that most people aren't willing to do what it takes. They aren't willing to stay in harmony with the law of gender. Now your dream, your goal, that's an intellectual seed. Now before it was an intellectual seed, before it was in your mind, it was a spiritual seed. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our diagram again. When you have an idea that comes into your mind, you have a new goal for a new dream. One day you'll wake up and you're driving down the road and boop, this new idea comes into your mind. One day you're sitting there, you're having a coffee, talking to a friend and boop, a new idea. One day you're in the shower, you're in the bathtub, you're just relaxing, boop, this new idea. And all these ideas are energy. What do we know about energy? Well, one thing we know about energy is that energy can't be created or destroyed. That must mean that this new idea that just came into your mind had to come from somewhere before it was in your mind. It, it couldn't come from nowhere. And I'm going to suggest to you that the idea that you have that comes into your conscious mind was at the top outside part of that top circle. It was above your conscious mind. In other words, the idea was in the mind of God. 
It was a spiritual idea long before it came into an intellectual idea. It was a spiritual seed and then moved into form into an intellectual seed. So what I want you to do now is above and outside that big circle where you have the conscious mind, right above the conscious mind, I want you to write the letter S. And that S represents spirit. Spirit, the mind of God. And what happened is, is because you are a creative being and you are a spiritual being and your spirit is always seeking fuller expression and fuller expansion, you are always connected with this S. You're always connected with spirit. You may allow this S to stand for spirit. You may allow the S to stand for source. And because you are a spiritual being, you want to be, do, and have more in your life. And this spirit inside of you causes an energy signature called desire. And then your desire to be and to do and to have more begins by law to do what all energy does. It expresses and it expands. And you begin to tap into spirit and source. And you then become aware of new ideas. Boop. And now you didn't have this idea. Think of your goal. Think of the goal that you have right now. You didn't have this idea when you were two years old. You didn't have the idea when you were five years old. You probably didn't have it when you were 10 years old or 15 years old or 20 years old. It may have taken 30 or 40 years, maybe even 50 years for you to become aware of this idea. It took me years to fully develop the idea that I wanted to have a company that I could sell for a million dollars and that I wanted to work full time in this industry teaching and training and mentoring people to understand the truth of their potential. It took me years to develop that idea and that dream, to tap into and become in harmony or in resonance with that idea. Now, when I formed the idea in my conscious mind, I didn't know how long it would take to manifest into physical results. However, we do know that any idea no matter how big or small we make it be, no matter how possible or impossible we make it seem in our mind, any idea that makes its way into our conscious mind, it's submitted to these seven laws. And by law, it must manifest into physical form. By the law of polarity, by the law of opposites, the law of opposite of an idea in the mind, is the idea of a result in physical form. Spirit always manifests itself in its polar opposite. Spirit always manifests itself in physical form. Now, I don't want to teach religion, but for those of you who are the Christian faith, if you are a Christian, this is what you believe. You believe that there is spirit, that there is the spirit of God. And you believe that the Spirit of God manifested itself into physical form, into the man Jesus Christ. And you believe that Christ was crucified and died and then resurrected back to Spirit. That's the perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy always returns to its source of origination. God the Father, Christ the man, the Holy Spirit. If you're Christian or Catholic, Protestant, Presbyterian, Orthodox, you believe in the Holy Trinity. So any idea that is placed into the conscious mind and in harmony with these seven laws will, by law, manifest into physical form. Look around you right now. You probably see a building, a home, a couch, a chair, a TV, a computer, or a phone. You see a door, a window. You see you know, clothing and cars, everything you see, not some things, everything, everything you see has as its ancestry thought. It all started first in the form of thought. And then that thought moved into physical form, everything. Do you think this works for everything but what you want? Do you think we, we, we put a man on the moon, robots on Mars, the, the cure for polio? Do you think it works for everything but what you want? Any idea 
that you place into your subconscious mind through your conscious mind and apply these seven laws to, by law will manifest into physical form. It's part of this natural creative process. And part of that process is that life gets in the way. Life sometimes gets in the way. There's some people who get in your way. There's some situations that get in the way. There's some energy that we bump into that's not in harmony with us. There are some boundaries that hold us back for periods of time. Some of those boundaries we can see. We call those obstacles. We step in and break through those as, as soon as we possibly can. But then there's some of those really big challenging ones. We don't even see those. And they make us wonder, you know, why is this happening? Why, why am I being held back? Why is it so hard? What am I doing wrong? You know, wh where am I out of harmony? Why are other people winning and I'm losing? So what's the next step? We've got to learn how to identify these boundaries. We've got to break through them. I know what you're thinking. How do I do that? Well, I'll tell you one good way. Learn from people who've gone through them. The Bible says, by their fruits, you know them. Learn from people who've gone ahead of you. You know there are some mistakes you don't have to make. You can learn from other people's mistakes. There's lessons you don't have to experience the pain of learning. You can learn from somebody else's journey. But the most important part is, is that you stay on your journey. You have an understanding of this law of gender. You understand that this idea you have, this dream you have, has been here since the beginning of time. It may have taken you 30 years, 40 years. I don't know how old you are. I don't know when you became aware of your dream. There's some dreams that I just had a new dream. I have a new dream right now that I'm working on. It took me 54 years, 54 years for that idea to go from a spiritual seed to an intellectual seed. Its next natural process of manifestation is to move into physical form in my life. And the only thing, the only thing that can stop it from being birthed is me, is if I kill it. If I kill it through fear, if I kill it through worry, negative self-judgment, if I quit, if I let other people kill it. We want to understand these seven laws. We want to understand that when we become aware of an idea, that that idea came from somewhere. It came from a source. And that source only creates two ways, perfectly and abundantly. And when we became aware of it, its next natural lawful expression is to move into physical form. The only thing, the only thing that can kill it is you. You may have challenges, you may have obstacles, you may have to grow in order to give birth to it, but the only thing that can abort that dream is you. And we do it through ignorance, a lack of understanding. I encourage you, listen to this lesson on these seven laws over and over and over and over and over again. Every single day, draw that picture of the stick person. Put your dream in it. Build the image of what it is that you want. Hold that image with your will. And we're back. Here we are. Now you have an understanding of what the law of gender is. Let's dive into how you apply it in your life and how you can utilize it to really move you forward as you work towards your own goals and dreams. You know, the law of gender, it's been kind of a tough one for me because it requires it requires a lot of patience and it requires faith. And, you know, I like to think of myself as a patient person. You know, when I when I know what I want and when I when I know when I'm gonna get it, even if it's a little ways out and I know the steps I need to take to get there, I can be patient, I can bide my time, it's all good. But that's not how the law of gender works. 
when it comes to our dreams, which are the seeds that we're planting, we don't know what the gestation and incubation period for those dream seeds are. I don't know when my dream is going to, is going to manifest in my physical reality. And th that's, that can be hard, especially when, you know, when you don't see, when you don't see any evidence that you're making progress in the conditions and circumstances of your life. So let me first encourage you, you know, one of the best things for you to do as you think about applying the law of gender in your life is to stay connected to a body of work or to a community that keeps you focused, that, that keeps your, your, your faith fortified, that keeps you looking forward and taking the next step. That's what the Empowered Living community is all about. It's about coming together and supporting each other in our dreams, in our goals, in what we want to bring to this world, in, in pouring out you know, our full life force, all that God has given us to, to, to bring forward. So let's support each other in that. Let's be here for one another. I'm here for you. Paul's here for you. Many of you have been here for me and I so appreciate that. You know, stay close to programs like this, to the fully resourced program that Paul teaches, to the Double Your Income program, which is coming up for launch, brand new program next week. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on. But stay close because as you're going through this process, the law of gender ch teaches us that, you know, it's going to take time. That is, it, you know, you think of an idea to, to make more money or to have a certain kind of house or to have a dream relationship. You think of the idea, but then it takes time before that idea comes forward in your life in the physical manifestation. So stay, stay strong and stay connected. Now, what I want to do is I want to just rewind. I want to go back about six years ago where I was in my life. I was in a place of struggle and I mean really significant struggle. I was in a marriage that was really tough, really tough. And when I say that, you know, when I, when I think about what that means, what that felt like, it was empty, you know, it felt empty. And even more than that, I felt empty. It was like I knew I had these ideas of what I wanted to bring forward in the world, what I wanted my life to look like. And I was trying so hard and I was doing the things and I was you know, following the advice and trying to bring, trying to create the life of my dreams. And it, it wasn't working. It didn't seem like it was working. You know, I was working basically a dead end job. I was working at a retail job at Lululemon. You know, not really much opportunity for 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 upward upward movement in that position. I remember at the time we were living in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is basically in the middle of nowhere, prairies, Western Canada. Middle of winter, temperatures would drop to like minus minus forty degree weather, just wind chill off the charts and I remember just trudging to work I had to take the bus to work because we couldn't afford a car and I remember you know all bundled up scarf wrapped around my face hood up just my big winter parka on my big snow boots on you know second hand because we couldn't afford much just trudging to work one step in front of the other, just keeping my head down because if I looked up, the snow would just, and the cold would just sting my face even more. And just one step in front of the next, one step in front of the next, just head down. And I couldn't look up. It was like, if I tried to look up the five minute walk to go from our house to the bus stop, it was like demoralizing. It's like, I felt like it was so far away. And you know, on top of that, I would leave an extra five minutes early. So I had a 10 minute wait, 10 minute walk and wait time for the bus because God forbid I miss the bus and the bus goes by without me getting on it. I either miss my shift or I have to catch a cab to get to my job. And then I'm, you know, working three quarters of my shift just to pay off the cab fare. It's like, that was where I was, that was, that was my life. 
I was pregnant and, you know, just thinking, how do I provide for this child that I'm bringing into this world? You know, we were going deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. And it's like, how am I going to make it? You know, I'm, I'm doing all the things and it's just not working. I knew I wanted more, but I, there was just no sign of more coming to about in my life. I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that, or maybe you're in a place like that right now, but it's hard. It's really hard. It's discouraging. It's frustrating. It feels like you know, maybe this doesn't work. You know, maybe, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe it works for other people, but not for me. Remember, fortify your faith. Stay close to the flame. Stay close to the fire. Stay close to the community because it does work. And I'm going to share with you the things that I've done to allow the law of gender to play out in my life and to activate it, to be able to move forward, to nurture and cultivate my dreams, to bring them forward in my life. Now, let me rewind back even further to when I was growing up. I grew up in a home where we had no conception of any ideas to do with personal growth, personal development, you know, the ideas of human potential, no idea that, no, foreign language. You know, we grew up, we grew up, we didn't have much, you know, we had no extras. And even, even the basic necessities, sometimes we didn't even have those. You know, to the point where by the time I was 12 years old, we had spent, my family had spent almost two years of my life living in other people's homes because we didn't have the money to afford our own home. You know, for most 12 year olds in the North American society, most 12 year olds, you know, have lived in a consistent, steady family home. And, um, and I did it. I didn't have that. I took on worries. I took on like adult worries. Like when I was six years old, we were looking for a house. And there we go. I just had to turn my phone on. Do not disturb. We were looking for a house because we had to move out of the apartment we were living in. There were at the time, there were seven of us, five kids, two parents. And we had to, you know, the, the house or apartment we were moving into had to have at least three bedrooms because you could only have a certain number of people in each bedroom as, you know, regulated by the city. And I just remember I was obsessed with the newspaper, but not just the newspaper, but specifically the rental ad column, looking for any rental homes um, available. And I knew that we needed three bedrooms. And, you know, if we got one bathroom or two bathroom, you know what, we'll go with one. We'll take whatever we can find. And I remember so circling, going through, scouring the newspaper and circling the circling any possibilities that, you know, might be a possibility for us. And then giving it, the newspaper to my parents saying, I found, you know, a few, have we checked these ones out yet? And my parents would take it. And as far as I knew, you know, they would call and follow up. And I was obsessed with that. Like I think about my son, Caleb, who's six years old. And I think about you know, him being worried about whether or not he has a place to live. And just like trying to wrap my head around that. I'm like, that's not the worry and the burden a six year old should carry. But that's the environment I grew up in. And, you know, just think about all that was programmed in my mind as I grew up in that environment, you know, the the worry the fear, the anxiety, the scarcity, the lack, the limitation, the unworthiness, all of it. You know, my plan as I got older was go to university, try and get a half decent job, just try and do a little bit better than what, you know, what I had grown up with. That was that was my hope, that was my hope, that was my plan, you know, just hope for a little bit better. You know, you need a little bit of hope. In, you need you need hope in your life. Hope is a good thing, but hope shouldn't be your game plan. It was my game plan. It was my game plan. And you know, as I grew older and and kind of came into my adult years, I really recreated 
I recreated the conditions and circumstances of my childhood in my adult life, in the early years of my adult life. The fear and the limitation and the lack, it wasn't good. When I was 20 years old, I was in the middle of my university years and I was at home for a summer and I remember my mom gave me a CD set and she had been given it by someone she hardly knew, to be honest, and someone had, you know, given it to her to listen to. And she said, Holly, you should check this out. You know, this is really interesting that, you know, this, this guy is, is talking about the law of attraction. He's talking, he started telling me about these ideas, you know, how our thoughts create a reality, how, you know, how we attract things into our lives, how, how everything is energy. It just, it made no sense to me. It was just like, what? It was like she was speaking a language I didn't understand. But there was a part of me, there was this curiosity. It's like, you know what, maybe, maybe I should check it out. Have you ever had that voice of curiosity, that voice of intuition, just like, just nudging you forward, just encouraging you to check something out, listen to it. When it does, listen to it, because that's an indication of a next step that you should take. Remember, in the process, we're talking about the law of gender. You've got to nurture your dreams. You've got to cultivate them. You've got to water them, just like a seed that you plant in the ground. Otherwise, they will die and wither away. So I took that step and I took that, I took that CD set. It was 12 CDs, about an hour on each CD, so 12 hours total. And I started listening to it and it fascinated me. And it was totally different than anything I'd ever heard of before, or anything I'd ever heard anyone else talk about before. As far as I knew, the only people in the world who knew about these ideas were my mom, me, the person who gave my mom the CD set, and the guy on the CD. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> but I started listening. And you know what happened is it was like, something switched on in me and I started to have this higher level of hope and even more than that vision to see the possibilities in front of me that you know what maybe there is more for me than just going to university trying to get a half decent job living the sort of lower class lower middle class life just you know just getting by maybe more is possible. And I really did start to dream. You know, I had this memory while I was, I was still in Toronto, going to school there, going to university. And I remember walking down the street, you know, you know, nothing, it's not like something major in my life suddenly changed when I started listening to these CDs. It's not like poof and magically, you know, things started appearing in my life. Not at all. But I remember, you know, I was still living a student life on a meager student budget. And I remember just walking down the street from, from my campus to the grocery store and then walking back with like six bag, grocery bags on each arm in a, on a you know beautiful fall day in Toronto, the leaves turning color, just a light wind in the air, cars zipping by, but I had my headset in and I was listening. I was listening to my audio. And I was listening and I was smiling and I was just thinking to myself, you know, I was looking, I was just thinking to myself, what if, you know, what if I could live in one of these beautiful houses I'm walking by right now? You know, my, the campus I went to happened to be located in one of the richest neighborhoods in Canada. You know, what if, so I was surrounded by, by opulence, by wealth even though I didn't at first see it as possible for me, but I started to dream and I just remember feeling so good. And I listened to that CD set over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, over and over and over again. Have I told you how many times I've listened to it? Probably hundreds, probably hundreds of times, at least some of, at least some of the CDs, hundreds of hours for sure. And I saw, I just saw and felt the feeling of possibility, that, that 
hope of possibility in front of me. And you know, there's possibility in front of you too. There's greatness. I think it was Les Brown who said, there is greatness in all of us. There's greatness in you. That you are, you were born with it. You're born to bring forward in this world, to contribute to this world. You know, this world needs you. This world needs what you uniquely have to bring forward. One of the, one of the dreams I was obsessed with, <laughs> and when I get on an idea, I kind of mentioned this at the start, when I get on, on an idea of something I want, it's like, I want it. I want it now. That's where my, you know, sort of my lack of patience tends to, <laughs> tends to trip me up a little bit, but that's okay, I'm working on it. But I remember I would start, I started Googling mansions and there was this house on the on Vancouver Island on the west coast of Canada and it was beautiful. It was about a $15 million home and it was very modern, but elegant and it, you know, very clean edges. It had a swimming pool on the roof. It had this beautiful like three acre property right on the ocean front with the mountains in the background with snow cap snow cap mountains, just beautiful, just stunning scenery. And I would go to that real estate listing over and over and over again, just look at it. Just imagine walking through that house, just flipping through the pictures one after another, just thinking of myself walking through that house. What if, what if I lived there? What if I lived there? You know, that house was made for someone. Why not, why not me? Why not my family? Why couldn't we be the ones to be there? Another dream I had was like dream vacation to Bora Bora. I think I think it's the name. It's so exotic, Bora Bora. I wanted and staying in one of those over the water over the water huts that are just beautiful with that crystal blue ocean water, just gorgeous. There are so many beautiful things in this world, and those things were created, whether by God or by man, they were created to be enjoyed by somebody. Why not me? Why not me? You know, my dream started first on the physical plane as they usually do when we start to dream. You know, the house, the car, the vacation, the clothes, and then started to shift and expand from there. What about my relationships? You know, I started to dream of the kinds of relationships I could have with friends, with my significant other, my family. I started to dream of who I could be as a person. What if I had more confidence? What if I was more self-assured? What if I was more happy? What if, what if, what if, and I started to imagine and dream and just see myself in that state. And what if I was more assertive? What if I was really just a strong woman? What would that feel like? What would that look like? And you know, I dreamt and I dreamt and I dreamt, but I was still in struggle. Things didn't suddenly change. I didn't suddenly have this flawless, absolute confidence that, you know, was bulletproof. And, you know, I had a lot of self judgment. I, I, I was my own worst enemy. You know, I would, I would put Holly down over and over and over again for all the things I failed to do and all the ways I messed up and, you know, and how I wasn't where I needed to be and where I should be. And, you know, other people were so far ahead. And you know, have you ever felt that way? It's not fun. It's not fun to be in that place. I was still in struggle. There's a gap between where I was and where I wanted to be. And I didn't know how to bridge that gap. I didn't know how to how to take the next step. I didn't know how to get there, but I did keep taking a step. When a step would present itself, when I learned something new, I would do it. You know, I, I learned that this idea of journaling and writing out your envisioning and writing out your dreams and having a vision board, that was something that you could do that was really powerful. I started to do that. I learned that, you know, saying I am statements, you know, I am confident, I am strong, I am wealthy. I am alive, I am vibrant, all of these things that I wanted to be and I wanted to feel, you know, starting to do these exercises, 
know, when, when opportunities would come my, my way to make more money, to, you know, to, to take a job that would pay a little more, to start a business. I started a painting business in college and, you know, it didn't do too bad considering I was a college kid. It was hard. It was really hard work, but I just kept taking the next step but it was still really hard. And I still didn't feel like I was getting there. At one point in my journey, I started training with a life coaching company because I thought, you know what? Maybe coaching, maybe life coaching is a way for me to contribute to this world, to give what I have to give, to give what I have to offer and to to find a new level of financial freedom. A new level as in, you know, a first level. I didn't have any financial freedom. I was, I was a burden, I was, I was, I was shackled to, you know, to, to money. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't command money, money commanded me. And I learned this technique from this coaching, from this coaching company. It, was, it served me very well whenever a negative thought would come into my mind and I would become aware of it, or whenever I would say something negative that wasn't in harmony with what I wanted in my life, with the financial goals I had for myself, with who I wanted to be, immediately I would catch myself and I would say, cancel, cancel. <laughs> Just like that, cancel, cancel. And I would say it out loud, you know, I could be anywhere. I would be in the middle of the grocery store in the in the baking aisle and I would say cancel cancel because a thought had just come to my mind about how you know what how am I ever gonna do that you know what that's never gonna work I'm never gonna get there I'm never gonna make the money I wanted to make cancel cancel shift refocus think about what it is that I want what is it that I want what is it that I desire what's what's in my heart that's calling me forward you know, our spirit is always seeking fuller expression and fuller expansion. Paul teaches that all the time. That was my spirit was calling me forward. And then that part of me full of self judgment and fear and doubt would say, Holly, well, you know, you can't, you know, who do you think you are? You're, you're not going to be able to do that. Cancel, cancel, shift, shift my energy, shift my energy. And every time I did that, I didn't know that, but I was activating the law of gender. Every time I said cancel, cancel, I was shifting my energy to a higher frequency to be more in alignment with what I wanted to attract in my, into my life, with what I wanted to bring forward. And you know, you being here today and watching this lesson, you're doing the same thing. You're activating the law of gender. You're nurturing and cultivating your dream seed just by being here. Keep taking the next step that's in front of you to take. Being here today is the next step. You know what, maybe there's another next step that's coming up that's gonna come into your awareness. You know, Paul's launching a program called Double Your Income next week for our Black Friday holiday special. A killer offer that's never going to be offered again at this price point with all of the bonuses included. It's only available for four days or so. If you have financial goals and you should, if you want to grow, you should have financial goals. That's an important part of growing this program. This program will really help you with that. So I just wanted to put that out there. You know, keep taking the next step. Then something happened, something happened that was another really pivotal step in my journey. My mom invited me to a workshop. So now I'm finished school, I'm working retail, I'm pregnant, I'm worried, I'm anxious, I have no idea how I'm gonna provide for my kids. I am, um, you know, I'm just stuck. And my mom says, you know, Holly, there's this workshop that I'm going to. It's a personal development workshop led by a guy who is like a really, really top, like high up executive coach with Fortune 500 companies and executives. And he was he was doing a workshop specifically on personal development. She said, just just come with me. It was about a two hundred dollar plane ride away from where I was living. And then I shared a hotel room with my mom. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I mean, I don't have $200. I 
but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to see what happens. It was that nudge in me that was like, you know what? This is my next step. And so I went to that workshop and I met this gentleman and I remember sitting in, sitting in the hotel. It was one of those standard hotel conference rooms with probably about a hundred people. We were all at, at round tables and I was just, I was watching, watching him present, but what caught my attention even more than what he was teaching was off to the side was his assistant sitting at the front of the room, but at a table like one of those rectangular tables at, at a hotel with her laptop in front of her, just typing away, working away on her laptop. And about every, you know, five or 10 minutes or so, Tony, the guy who was speaking, would say to his assistant, say, Laura, can you pull up such and such a presentation or such and such a document or, you know, that slide deck I have about X, Y, Z, can you pull, can you pull that up? And she would type on her computer and within a few seconds, up it would pop on the screen for all of us to see. And I just remember looking at her and just like, so like in a trance, like, I want to do what she's doing. I want to be like the assistant to somebody like this, who's doing really good work in the world, who's helping people in a really significant way, who's helping businesses, who's helping entrepreneurs, who's helping people like myself. I want to do what she's doing. And then I took it an even a step further because I saw her confidence and I saw her enthusiasm and I saw her, her kindness and I saw how she just presented herself, just polished and articulate and just a really wonderful person to be with. And I thought, I don't just want to have her job. I want to be her. That's who I want to be. And I didn't realize it at the moment at that time, but I was planting a seed. In that very moment, I planted a seed. But here's the thing, I went home and I went back to my life. I was still pregnant. I was still working at a dead end job. I was still in a marriage that was really struggling. I was still not making ends meet. We were still going deeper in debt. Month after month, after month, after month. And I was still doing the things. I was still listening to the audios. I was still reading the books. I was still journaling. I was visualizing. I was, I was taking any and every opportunity I could to make more money, to try to shift my energy. Every time a negative thought came into my mind, cancel, cancel, shift, cancel, cancel, shift. And I was doing the things, but it wasn't changing but it was, I didn't see it, but it was, it was changing. The change just hadn't come to manifest in my physical reality yet, but underneath the surface, that plant, those little seeds were sprouting and were come, becoming closer and closer up to the surface of the soil. I just couldn't see it, but it was discouraging and it was frustrating. It was demoralizing and I felt like this doesn't work or it's not working for me. You know what I mean? It's really hard. 14 months after that workshop it was December, 2015. And my mom, God bless her. Honestly, she has been my biggest cheerleaders in the world encouraging me in my personal growth journey. And I'm so grateful to her and for her. But I, uh, she said to me, she said, Holly, there's this guy, Paul Martinelli. And I had heard his name. She'd been studying his work for a couple of years by that point. I just, I hadn't really, you know, gotten into it. And I hadn't, I hadn't, you know, tuned into any of his courses. She said, there's this guy, he's leading a study on the book, Think and Grow Rich. I just think you should really consider joining. You know, I've gone through Thinking Grow Rich studies two times before. They are so good, Holly. This is so worth it. You should really think about joining. And I just remember thinking, it's $200, $200 US, which if you're Canadian, you know what that means. It's $200, I don't have $200. Like literally every penny we make is going towards paying rent, paying utilities, paying for food, maybe buying a few baby items for the baby on the way. But even that, no, even that honest to God, 
for my first son, I didn't even have a, I didn't even buy a crib for him. I didn't have money to buy a crib. And I, I, you know, we told everyone we're just doing the minimalistic approach. You know, we had him in just a little travel, travel pen for the first couple of months. And then literally like on a pad on the floor with a few blankets over it. So it was a little bit of cushion. That was his bed for like the first year of his life. We weren't doing a minimalistic approach. <laughs> that was all we could afford to do. We weren't intentionally being these minimalistic parents. No, that's all we can manage. So these $200 to join Paul's Thinking or Rich program, I don't have $200. But I remember the exact moment, I remember exactly where I was, I remember the room I was sitting in, who I was with, and I remember when I just had that flash of certainty that yes, my next step is to join the Think and Grow Rich program. You know what? I don't know why, but I know that is my next step. And I said the words out loud. Like I spoke life into those words, into that idea, into that dream. Words have power. What you say, the things you say out loud have so much power. Remember, cancel, cancel. Negative thought, cancel, cancel. Negative word, cancel, cancel. Cut it off. You don't want that kind of power to be controlling you. Allow the positive words to come forward. And I spoke life into that. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna join Think and Grow Rich. I didn't have $200. I put it on a credit card. You know what? You're not always going to know how you're going to do something, but even though you know it's the right next thing to do, figure out a way. Figure out a way to do that thing. Trust me. It's worth it. You're worth it. Your dream is worth it. Remember, I don't know if you've ever heard Paul say, but I've heard him say so many times, your dream wants all of you. It wants all your money. It wants all your certainty. It wants all your energy it wants all you know it wants all of you because it wants to give all to you so i joined a thinking grow rich program and i was like okay here i am i spent 200 dollars. i'm 200 dollars deeper in debt okay you know what i'm gonna make the most of it i'm gonna listen to every teaching video i'm gonna get on every call something's got to come from this 200 dollars that i just spent because i'm not gonna let it be wasted that is one thing for sure and so I got on every call and I listened to every teaching video. And about three weeks into the program, Paul's doing an eight hour open Q&A call. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he could do Q&A for eight hours long, but he stood, stayed on the phone every, for every single last person on that, on that uh, line. But at one point he said, he said, he mentioned he, he had let his assistant go. He'd had to fire her. And it was like, poof. Just all of a sudden, it was like this idea in my mind, just this light bulb lit up. And I was like, I can be Paul's assistant. I can be Paul's assistant. I mean, sure, I don't have any formal experience being someone's assistant, especially someone at Paul's level. But I'm smart. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm innovative. I, I find solutions. I can do it. I can figure it out. I could be his assistant. So I got on the line, I pressed star six, and I told Paul that I wanted to be his assistant, that it would be an honor to serve him in that way, that I would be the best assistant he had ever had, that God had gifted me with organization and administration. All of those things later on, I realized weren't really as true as I thought they were in that moment, but that's okay. It all worked out. And two days later, Two days later, I had the job. I took the leap. The opportunity presented itself and I jumped. But you see, I didn't realize it. But for those last 14 months, since I had had the idea that I wanted to be someone like Paul's assistant, someone like that guy, Tony's assistant, I wanted to be like that, that lady, Laura. I didn't realize it, but I was preparing for those 14 months to take this jump. You know, if I hadn't allowed that seed to be planted and if I hadn't done all the things, all the journaling and all the visualization and all the I am statements and all the, all the cancel, cancel, shift, cancel, cancel, shift. 
and jumping on the next opportunity and and starting that next side business and and finding that next opportunity to make a few extra dollars all of these things i wouldn't have been ready to take the jump i wouldn't have probably even had the idea to take the jump i mean heck there were you know 800 other people on that line and no one else said they wanted to be paul's assistant I didn't realize it, but the law of gender was in play all that time. All that time when it felt like nothing was working, when I felt like I was doing all the things and it wasn't happening. And there had to be something wrong with me. No, it was working. That's how this works. You know, Napoleon Hill says in Thinking Grow Rich, he said, when, when riches begun to be begin to come they come so fast and so furiously they wonder you wonder where they've been hiding all those lean years it's like when i honest to god when i got the job working for paul my income i my income level jumped to more than twice what i had been making at any job i had previous to that honest to god i doubled my income in that one career shift and that one job opportunity opportunity. If you don't think it's possible to double your income, rethink that, rethink that idea, seriously. And really you know, circle on your calendar next Wednesday, because that's when the double your income program is being released. And you can do it. You, you can do it. There's a process that you can follow to double your income. I've done it. Paul's done it many times over. You can do it. So I went from, you know, living in this fear based hope of just trying to just hoping that I could get by just hoping that things would be okay, to this, this life, life driven faith of just like, yes, okay, now what? What's next? Just feeling the excitement and the exhilaration of getting up each morning and going to work, doing work that I loved, knowing that it was making a difference and knowing that it was making a difference in my bank account most first and foremost. I mean, when you're in struggle, honestly, that's what matters first. You can't help people if you're in a place where you're just stuck, where you're just struggling to make ends meet. If I can do it, so can you, you know, if I can take a jump like that, so can you. But you have to take every step to get there. You know, every step in the journey from, you know, from when the CD set was first placed in my hands more than 10 years ago to where I am today, every step was an important step, even the hard ones, even the ones where I felt like I was going backwards. You know, even the step where, you know, my relationships were crumbling and where, you know, the debt was piling up and where, you know, I had, you know, I didn't know how I was going to work out things with my kids and having, you know, having a split relationship and how do you work that out? And then there's some money and then all the things, you know, I had to take every step and every step was an important step to get me from where I was to where I wanted to be. And you have to take every step. No one can do it for you. No one can do it for you, but you can do it. You have within you all of the resources, everything you need to be able to take every step along the journey, to be able to reach the goals that you want to reach. You can do it. This is how you activate the law of gender. You come, you have an idea of what to do. You take that step and you trust and you have faith that even when you can't see the results, you know, you know that it's working. And that's why you need a community because there will be days and there will be plenty of days where you will forget that, where you will doubt that, where you will feel like it's not working. There's, there's no chance in the world that this is working. If this was working, it would have worked by now. No, no. That's, that's when right before that point is when that's when things start to change, but you have to have people around you and be in programs that support you and that give you the faith and give you the hope and give you the awareness that you need to take the next step, take the next step. You know, a, the law of gender, it's all about, there's a gestation and incubation period for all things, you know, a, a gestation and incubation period that we're all very familiar with as people is the nine month period, you know, 
nine months to a year. Nine months is how long a woman is pregnant for. A year is how long we usually sort of measure our goals and, and set new goals by. Why, what if you were just to enter into an experiment for the next nine months to a year? Get into the Double Your Income program when it launches next Wednesday. Get into it and enter into an experiment and see, you know, what if, what if you could? You know, so often we tend to think, well, you know what, what if it doesn't work? It's not working. What if it doesn't work? What if it does work? Because I'm telling you it does. I'm living proof it works. You know, I, I look at my life now and my life is a thousand percent different than where I was, than what it looked like six years ago. I have, I have a beautiful home. I have a, I have a, a loving, fulfilling relationship. I have two, two gorgeous children who are healthy and thriving. I love the work that I get to do financially. I'm good. Financially, I'm good. But there's nothing special about me that isn't special about you. I just followed a process. I just did the things that I needed to do. I just, as soon as a step uh, came into my awareness to do, I took the next step and I just did it. And so can you, so can you. So circle your calendar Wednesday, Wednesday, November 24th, double your income is being released. You're going to get an email about it. Circle your calendar. We'll be posted on the Facebook page right here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really, truly, thank you for be being with me, for listening to my story, for sharing, for allowing me to share this with you. And just know that I believe in you. you no, know, I believe in what you have to offer this world. And I know that it's significant and I know that it's needed. And you know what else? You got this. You got this. You can do this. You can do this. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Be well. Thank you.